Hi, my name is Pamela Rodriguez. I'm a registered nurse enrolled in the Robert Morris RN to MSN program. This is my presentation of my analysis of the essay, Why Don't We Complain, by William F. Buckley, Jr., located on page 76 of our textbook, 50 Essays, a Portable Anthology, by Samuel Cohen, copyright 2011. Could you imagine sitting on a train while the temperature inside the car soars to over 85 degrees? Or how about a crowded theater with an out-of-focus picture for the entire movie? Mr. Buckley describes these scenarios at the opening of his article, Circa 1960. Let's think about 1960. This was before cell phones, the internet, or social networking. There was no four-square check-in or Yelp ratings. Mr. Buckley talks about this era as a time when complaining publicly was just taboo. People were polite and let things go. The temperature in his train is rising to be higher than the outside temperature. In the theater of his article, the picture of the screen is unwatchable for the length of the movie. His wife, at the theater with him, begs him, Dear, dear, please, please be quiet. He sits quietly, hoping that someone else will have the gumption to alert the management to the situation inside the theater. Large groups of people are present at both venues, yet not one person complains. Mr. Buckley's main point is that people need to stand up for themselves and that they just don't complain. Really? I can't imagine many times that I've seen this happen today. Once at the Lowe's Multiplex Theater in Homestead, the soundtrack and video were out of sync for a few moments. People started booing and throwing things at the screen. Sometimes I wish people would just stop complaining about things. On page 79, he relays a story of standing in a lengthy line at a ski repair shop shortly after his New Year's resolution to, quote, conquer my shyness, my despicable disposition to supineness, end quote. He asks an idle staff member innocently to hand him a screwdriver. Turns out that poor soul is being what we would call today life flighted out of that mountainous area because of a heart attack. Mr. Buckley feels like a cad as the whir of the approaching helicopter is heard. Everyone looks at Mr. Buckley as some selfish lunatic. In Mr. Buckley's defense, the man was sitting, puffing on a pipe while affably interacting with the staff and other customers. While he writes up this portion of his story on a plane, which is described on page 80 of the text, he can't get to his paper supply because of his lunch tray. The stewardess, empty-handed, waves off his request to take away his lunch tray. Poor Mr. Buckley. He just can't seem to get any respect or any good customer service. He goes from his problems with customer service into the political apathy of the era on page 81. He predicts that political apathy will lead to a future of American public automaton. Merriam-Webster online defines an automaton as an individual that acts in a mechanical fashion. How can he jump to this observation based on his customer service experiences? Well, as it turns out, Mr. Buckley is a well-known political analyst. I was thinking of political apathy and decided to look at voter turnouts. From the websites presidentelect.com and presidentelect.us and doing some arithmetic with the statistics on the site, I found that in the 1960 presidential election, there were 47 million voters, which represents 26% of that population, compared to 127 million voters in the 2012 election, which represents 40% of that population. I was truly surprised by this finding. When I was growing up, election day was a huge deal. Nowadays, oh, listen to me, nowadays I sound old, but nowadays, People are often reminded on social media sites or the news to go and vote on election day. I see a growing interest in having a political voice in the young voters today, especially through my voting age children and their friends. I think that Mr. Buckley would be pleasantly surprised at the voter turnout for the 2012 election, quoted by President-elect.us as being a banner turnout year for America. Perhaps he had a chance before he died to see the effects of Facebook, social networking, and the internet on the public making their voices heard. His described muteness of America is no longer, but that voice may not always have a face to go along with the mouth from which it spews. Sites like Yelp and Travel Advisor allow individuals to post under pseudonyms their reviews of businesses or experiences. When a face is missing, many things that are said 
would not be said in a non-anonymous situation. Surely he would be appalled by the lack of scruples of some posters and their zealous attempts to put businesses under or blacklist them for potential customers. Mr. Buckley was not one of the baby boomers or the me generation. Surely if he had experience with this future generation in this or subsequent articles, perhaps he would be sick of the perceived selfishness of the general public today. I am sure he would have been horrified at the resulting pinging of beverages and popcorn at that homestead Lowe's Theater. His next article might very well have been entitled something like The Downward Spiral and Lack of Composure of the Complaining America of 2013. Thank you.